Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on graphing a frequency distribution using the histogram feature in Microsoft Excel. So I have here a Microsoft Excel worksheet that has a set of scores, it has 50 scores, and this is fictitious data. But let's assume that the minimum score would be 0 and the maximum would be 100. And I want to plot a frequency distribution so that I can see how the data are distributed. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look under the data selection, data ribbon. And you want to make sure you have the data analysis tools enabled. So you can see all the way to the right of this ribbon, uh, I do have it enabled. It brings up a data analysis dialog. If you don't have this here, just go to File, Options, Add-ins, and down toward the bottom here you can see the button Go, uh, so say Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go, and you'll see that Analysis Tool Pack is one of the options you can check off. Of course on mine it's already checked off. So just click OK and you'll have this option available on the data ribbon. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the measures of central tendency for our data. Always a good idea to do before running uh, a frequency distribution before looking at that, before developing a histogram. And you can see I, I have uh, the mean, which is the function average in Excel, uh, the median, which is median, and the mode, which is mode, and a sample standard deviation, which is stdev.s. So we can already see from this that if the lowest possible score is 0 and the highest is 100, you know, we have the mean of 50.1875 and the median of 50.5 and a mode of 58. So we could probably already guess that most of the scores are somewhere near the middle of the distribution. The next thing we want to do is to decide how we want to divide the data for the frequency distribution. So for this we have to develop what are called bins. So to use the histogram feature in Excel, the way you decide uh, and categorize the bins has to do with the maximum value for a particular score. So for example, for the 10 bin, this would include every score from 0 through 10. And since we have a 10, we move to 20, this would be 11 through 20. And this would be 21 through 30. Now that can be a little confusing, and certainly for a report uh, that we're going to be generating at the end, we don't want it to look like this. So over here, what I've done is I just typed out uh, in text, these are formatted as text, what the bins look like uh, in a little more interpretable uh, fashion. So you have 0 through 10, 11 to 20, 21 through 30, and so on. So I have these stored over here in column G. I'm going to move them over once we run uh, the histogram feature so that the graph is a little easier to interpret. So now we can use the histogram feature to actually produce the frequency table that will be the source of data for the chart. So we'll go to data analysis and I'll open the data analysis dialog and you can see there's many options here uh, but we're going to select histogram and click OK. It's first going to ask for an input range. The input range contains the actual scores. So notice I'm going to select here A1 and include uh, the label score and go all the way down to A51. That's all 50 records plus the label. Then for bin range, do the same thing, select bins and then all the way down. So all the bins are selected in that range. I'm going to make sure to click labels here. So for the output range, I'm just going to select uh, D2. Now fit in this area that I've created here in the middle for the output. And you can also have it produce a chart 
uh, automatically, but I prefer to do that myself. I'll show you how I do that. So we'll click OK, and you can see you've got the bins, and it adds another one here, which is more. With, so that this would be 101 and above, which of course there were none. And then you have the frequency. So initially, a little difficult to interpret because of the way the bins are structured, so I'm just going to take the ranges that I've created here to the right and copy and paste them in. And I can center that, make it a little easier to read. So you can see between 0 and 10, there was one score, 11 and 20, one score. As you move up between 51 and 60, 12 scores. So fairly straightforward. The frequency indicates the number of times a score appeared in this particular range, in the, in the range indicated over here in bins. So from here, we can represent this frequency distribution using a histogram, using a chart. So I've selected the entire table. I'll go over to Insert, the top ribbon here, Column, and just select a basic column chart. And you can see here's the frequency distribution. I like to use the uh, for frequency distributions or histograms. I like to use the display, which is on the second row, fourth one over, because it actually puts the uh, frequency on the bar. So you can see it on the left, on the vertical axis, but you can also see it on the bar. I also delete the word frequency here that comes up to the right. It just takes up space. Uh, this allows the chart to look a little better and uh, go with something a little more colorful, something that stands out a little better. So you can see this is the histogram for this data. And you can see there is a concentration of scores toward the middle and toward the extremes. There's not as many observations. This chart format is easy to read and fairly straightforward. The one thing I like about the charts in Excel, uh, there's actually quite a few things I like about them, but one of the things in particular I like for this situation is that they are dynamic in nature. This dynamic property would be evident, uh, for instance, if I change some of these frequency values, which of course in research you would not do, but, but just to demonstrate the ability of the chart. Uh, say that we added values, like so we had additional values to this data set uh, now that's something that could happen. We have 50 here, but say we, we, we get three more, and we just wanted to update this uh, table rather than uh, going through the whole procedure again. And say we, we uh, received one more score between 11 and 20, so that would bring that to two. You can see it changes it right on the uh, chart. Say we got another value between 50 or 41 and 50. See it changes it. and say we got another one between 91 and 100, it changes that as well. So it's, uh, it's very convenient, the uh, charting feature, because of that dynamic nature allows you to see what different scenarios look like graphically uh, just by changing the values in the frequency table. I hope you found this video on graphing a frequency distribution using the histogram feature in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.